Judge Flash's defense's statement in Van Breda case. Judge Saranda say working through a summary judgment statement in the case of triple murder accused Henri Van Breda said the court is in agreement with the state prosecutor that it is highly unlikely the parameter of the luxury deeds Alda estate was breached by an intruder. He said Susan Galloway had stated that the location security measures and position of the house made it highly unlikely that an intruder would have gone undetected on the property. Judge Pisay also said that Van Breda's call to emergency services, which lasted from 7.12 a.m. to 7.37 a.m. on January 27, 2015, showed a lack of urgency while the demeanor of the accused during an unduly long conversation with them seems highly unusual for a traumatized victim and that at no point did the responder have to request him to calm down. He also said that Van Breda did not make use of other obvious options in his search for help. For example security numbers on a list on the fridge, and had also only called his girlfriend a minor residing at a school hostel shortly after the attacks. It is common cause that he did not attempt to alert the security at Deep Alta said Desai. Desai also pointed out that the accused had testified that he knew it was a very serious situation and had during the course of the trial said he was under the impression that both his brother Rudy and sister Marley were still alive. But peculiarly enough said to say he made no mention to M's responder Janine Philander that his brother was still alive. This had only come out during the court case. Desai also said that Van Breda under cross-examination had said he had called emergency services again when in fact no prior call had been made. This is simply not a true statement said Desai adding that Van Breda had made no such first call before the alleged loss of consciousness. He did an internet search at 4.27 a.m. and only phoned for the first time at 7.12 a.m., he said. Regarding the blood flow patterns on Van Breda's chest blood stain analyst Marius Joubert said the blood flow patterns occurred with Van Breda's torso erect and not as he lay on the stairs as claimed by the defense. Joubert said instead that the slight deviation of the blood was caused by slight pooling of the blood depending on the contours of the skin and had not resulted from him being in a lying down position. Before the court broke for a short tea break Desai referred to the evidence of Dr. James Butler who had said Van Breda's missing two hours and 40 minutes from his timeline might have resulted from a postictal state following the seizure as in the last few days of the trial he was diagnosed with juvenile myoclonic epilepsy. The judge said that Dr. Butler diagnosis two and a half years later is a conclusion with exaggerated influences as it is based on information that is incomplete is not necessarily reliable and could not be corroborated. And he added even if the court accepts that Van Breda had a grand mal seizure on the night of the incident that had no bearing on his actions and decisions made before the seizure. He said such a seizure would therefore have had no bearing on the commission of the murders if he is found to be responsible for the crimes. He said that at most it would explain his inappropriate behavior after the murders. Van Breda's girlfriend Danielle Camp Van Rensburg walked behind him as they entered court after a short tea adjournment. Many court watchers including legal experts some from the National Prosecuting Authority, feel that Van Breda will in all likelihood be found guilty. <laughs>